Hello YouTube viewers. Today I'm going to show you how save control rectifier in MATLAB simply. For that, you choose Simscape library. Under this, you select Sim Power System and load the required blocks for your application. For half wave control rectifier, the main block is thyristor. You load that one to the one new model. Okay, this is the new model, and uh, save this new model with appropriate name. Half wave. Rectify. Save that one. And from the library browser window, and select another other block required for your application. That is one voltage source. And from the elements, you select the load load element. Here. There are so many elements from this you can select the load. Here they give one series RLC branch. From that series RLC branch only you can select the type of load. That is R load, RL load, RC load, RLC load like that. We load that one. And to measure the current and voltage in your application, you select you select the current and voltage measurements you load them into your new model after that from the simulink library under simulink library commonly used under in commonly used block you select one scope to observe the behavior of the output voltage current and uh, from the sources you can select the pulse generator for giving the triggering pulse to the ACR after loading all these one you arrange these blocks properly and uh, connect them each other the voltage source of is connected to the resistor and the double click on series RLC branch ok from this there are so many options resistor, inductor, capacitor RL, RC, LC what type of load you want you can select here I am selecting first R load and give some value that is 10 volts apply ok and you rotate you rotate this block clockwise ok this is our load and uh, in order to measure the current through load you can connect the current measurement like a meter and in the same way to measure the voltage across the load you connect voltage measurement like voltmeter and in order to give the pulses to the thyristor we have chosen the pulse generator you double click on that one the amplitude whatever you given you keep as this that is not mandatory if you want you can change like 5 10 like that that is not mandatory small amount of pulse is sufficient to trigger that one ok you can give 2 3 4 5 whatever the value you want you can give that is not uh, mandatory this one is period means how much period ok if suppose we are giving the 50 hertz frequency means the MATLAB understand only the time in seconds in time format only 
that's why you convert that frequency into time that is 50 Hz means 1 by 50 that is 20 millisecond you can give that is 0 0.02 the pulse width as you keep that is not uh, um, you can change whatever you want 50 70 like that that is not matter and the phase delay means here you can give the firing angle okay what firing angle at what point at what firing angle you are going to trigger that is 30 degrees 45 degrees 90 degrees like this here i am wanting you the 45 degrees means here it is you can observe here here 0 0.02 is per 360 degrees okay means for 180 degrees it is 0 0.01 and for 90 degrees it is 0 0.005 and in the same way for 45 degrees it is 0 0.0025 okay that's why i'm giving the 45 degrees in time why because matlab understand only time in seconds okay that is 0 0.0025 okay apply this one okay and now next you connect this triggering pulse pulse generator to the scr now you give the supply voltage single phase supply voltage that is 230 and you give the frequency is 50 hertz don't forget this one otherwise you cannot get the required output why right? because here i given the pulse the triggering pulses for 50 hertz frequency if you not change here 50 hz frequency the output not exact as you expected okay apply okay now here i want to measure the three parameters that is voltage current and uh, pulses that's why from the scope block double click on that one and uh, from the settings and on the parameters you give the number of axes is three and apply that one okay then it show the three terminals now you connect first one i'm giving pulses and the second one is second one is voltage output voltage and the third one is output current you click on that one give some name for them access properties here sig signal label here given pulses to identify more clearly here it will show the pulses here you can give the output voltage output voltage okay in the same way here also you can give output current okay now one more important thing is in order to work with sim power system model model blocks you should add one more block that is power view block why because all the sim power system blocks interlink with the power view block that's why it is mandatory to add power view block into your application you search power view and load into your application and keep that block always in top okay now and you keep the thyristor whatever the parameters they given as it is don't disturb that one and i given low voltage also i given triggering pulse also now you exude that one the appropriate term here i am giving 0 0.5 second whatever the value you want you can do up to 10 Okay, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever the value you can give more than 10 also. That is not mandatory. Now I am executing the file. Now observe this one. Okay, here 
in order to see more clearly you can change the access properties here minus 5 to 5 the previously is 1 to minus 1 to 1 ok you are getting and uh, in order to reduce the x axis you can go in scope manager time range you can give it is up to 0 0.5 is there suppose i want to only up to 0 0.1 if you want to observe the waveform more clearly you can give here 0 0.1 apply ok ok here now you observe that one these are the pulses triggering pulses to this here this is the output voltage and this is the output current for resistive load the output voltage and output current are in phase ok here I given the triggering pulse at 45 degrees this one is 90 degrees this is 180 and this one is at 360 degrees I have given now this is the waveform for resistive load for half a rate suppose I want to add the I want to change the load to RL just to select to select RL load and give some value ok for this I am giving 10 milli henry apply that one ok now compile this one now double click on this ok you observe this ok you can observe this here ok in order to get more clear ok 0 0.1 time range I given ok and in order to see the pulses more clearly minus 5 to 5 you can give ok see here this is the triggering pulses as it is whatever you observe for the resistive load but here observe the output voltage waveform here this is 5 means 180 degrees after 180 degrees there is a negative negative waveform so output voltage is negative this is because of inductive load ok inductive load inductance stores the energy because of stored energy in the inductive load ok it induces some voltage across the inductor this voltage is more than the negative voltage that's why thyristor is still remains in conduction but actually because of line commutation because of natural commutation uh, thyristor has to turn off at the at 180 degrees ok because of stored energy in the inductor it induces the some voltage across the inductor this induced voltage is much greater than the negative supply voltage that's why it is uh, thyristor SCR is still in conduction ok until the dissipate the total energy in the inductor ok it will take some time okay. so during that period current else exist why because the current through the load is same direction even though supply voltage is reversed ok the current through the load is same direction ok that's why the current is positive ok thank you viewers this is explanation about this of a control rectifier in resistive and resistive inductive load thank you very much